located in Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast today. We know that you will be blessed. To learn more about the House of God, visit us online at www.houseofgod.org. Be blessed. sharing with us today. We're thankful for each of you, for all of the friends and those that share with us uh, on this presentation. We thank you so very much for your time and for your support as well. We pray that you and your families are well and that you're experiencing the blessings of God. Uh, during these times, we need God's mercy uh, as never before. I thank him each and every day uh, for his provision, uh, for his concern uh, for our welfare. So 
Thank God for all of you that are sharing today. To all of you in the House of God who still are having state meetings, if you had a state meeting last week or possibly this week, we want to thank God for you. Thank you for your support to the church. Uh, thank you for your love for the body of Christ. Thank you for your love for the house of God. Uh, you're appreciated, and we want you to know that today. To all of our pastors and superintendents and to all of those that are responsible for uh, keeping this church healthy and keeping it well uh, during these difficult times, we thank you for your generous generosity of gifts and to all that you do uh, for the church. We also want to give a shout out to our national finance uh, department. Uh, who helps you in, in navigating uh, the ways of giving today that are not necessarily the traditional ways that we share. So we thank you, uh, National Financial Department of the Church, for all that you do in assisting us in aiding the saints and helping them uh, through uh, methods of giving. Uh, last week I shared with you, and I want to continue uh, somewhat on that same thought, concerning patience. Uh, during these times of COVID-19 and the rapid spread of the coronavirus, it is important for us to have patience. Now, patience does not mean that you're sitting passively and not doing anything. That's not the kind of uh, patience that the Bible's talking about. Uh, we have an active patience in as much as we are seeking God, communicating with God, uh, doing those things that he has prescribed for us through his word. It's not going off somewhere in a corner and with your head down and not being actively engaged uh, in a relationship with God. But it is uh, actively doing those things that are necessary to keep us safe. I said this last week. I'll follow up with it today. Uh, I'm more concerned now uh, than I was back in March uh, this year when the uh, virus began in our country. I'm more concerned now because we have had a long time with this virus and uh, we've been more or less sequestered or confined, uh, restricted in the places that we go and our activities. And for some, this is creating a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, a lot of wanting to get out and, and experience the normal that used to be. And I understand that. I'm experiencing some of the same things that you all are experiencing in terms of, of not doing those things that I love to do or places that I love to go. But what we're finding out, uh, the virus is definitely on the move. And I don't want us to make the mistake of thinking that because uh, we have not contracted this virus that it, it, it's okay. We're going to be fine. You're not going to be fine. You're putting yourself at risk. So I want to follow up with the, the idea of patience uh, in working through uh, this virus. God is doing excellent work each and every day. He's showing us mercy. He's protecting us. He's shielding us. He's providing for us. Uh, he's doing his job. And even for some that have contracted the virus, God has been merciful. We don't want to discount that. Uh, when we've made unwise decisions, unwise choices, uh, God has still been merciful. Uh, some of us have contracted the virus and been sick. Uh, we've now uh, recovered, and there are those that are continuing to recover. So we don't want to discount what the Lord is doing. The other side of this is we don't want to exploit God. We don't want to take advantage of and abuse his mercy and grace and, and, and do things that are unwise. So I'm very concerned. I don't make any, any excuses for that. I'm very concerned. I'm concerned for the church. I'm concerned for our country. Our numbers now are over 270,000 Americans that have died. Think about that. Since March of 2020, 270,000 plus Americans have died from COVID-19. That's a staggering number. That's unbelievable that that can happen in that short amount of time. That does not count the millions of people that have been infected by this virus. 
So it is not it is not something that we should take lightly. So I want to follow up with, with what we were talking about last week in looking at patience. And maybe I can share with you some ways uh, that might be beneficial for you in coping with this virus. I want to start with something the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians. And I'm going to turn there just briefly so we can read that together. I want us to take a look at this. Uh, the approach that I will use for this is not the usual approach that we find in this particular scripture, but I want to take a different look at it today and maybe shed some insights that might be beneficial to someone. Very simple, it's not complicated. Uh, Paul makes this observation in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. He gives us a discourse on how we should conduct ourselves as the recipients or messengers that contain the Holy Ghost. So he, he talks about what we shouldn't do in terms of lifestyle. And in verse 19 of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, Paul has this to say. He says, What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? He goes on in verse 20 to explain what he means. Uh, For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. Now traditionally, when we take a look at the scripture, we're really talking about our bodies being the temple of the Holy Ghost. And as such, there are some things that we are not to do in terms of yielding our bodies, our members, our thoughts, our physical bodies uh, to lust and sin of every description. That's really the context in which Paul is talking about. I'm going to take some liberty today uh, with Paul's very excellent writing, styling uh, the body as a temple of the Holy Spirit. I want to take a look at that temple today from a different because he's really talking about the physical body. He's not talking about the spiritual body. He's not talking about spiritual about our physical body being the vessel that houses the Holy Ghost. So he says, don't take that body to simple people. go through a whole litany of things which I learned about. Is during COVID 19, during this time when we're restricted, during this time of pressure, during this time of stress that we all feel uh, from various, uh, for various reasons, different conditions, it could be employment, unemployment, it could be dealing with the confinement of your children at home and homeschooling and virtual learning, uh, it could be the anxiety that you feel because you're beginning to feel uh, claustrophobic and closed in and not being able to get out. Look at what Paul is talking about with the human body. I want to talk about that today. Because I think in this time where we're dealing with so many different things, it is important for us to take good care of our body. Take care of our body and our mind during this time, because our bodies are the vehicle that we use to get done what we need to get done. And during these times that we're restricted to confined, we want to do our very best in maintaining our bodies. We need to be concerned about Food. Feel 
some of those things. We may find ourselves being more sedentary in our lifestyle, where you were once getting out more, you find now you're sitting more. Uh, you're sitting on comfort of your favorite chair, your couch, your family room, your living room, your basement. You may find yourself not being as active as you once were, not burning the calories that you did previously because you're not out and about. Your body is your temple, the temple of the Holy Ghost. It's also, it is also that body that you use to do the things you need to do, to lift to move, to walk, to bend, to stretch, to flex, to do all those things. Your body, your body houses the vital organs of your, of, 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 of your, your, your temple, your heart, your lungs, all of your, your, your precious uh, body organs are housed within this temple. Now, it's the same temple that Paul is talking about. The only difference is he's talking about it in the terms of uh, 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 the righteous things, but I'm not as concerned right now on the sin proposition, and I'm concerned about that too, but I'm concerned for our health, our health, our physical well-being, our blood pressure, our heart rate, those things that are part of this body. I'm concerned about that. I'm also concerned about our mental well-being because your mind, your brain, is a part of your body too. It is that intellectual part, uh, that part where, that makes, where you make decisions. It is the thinking part of the body. I'm concerned that it's not going to languish. I'm concerned about our bodies as we go through uh, this period of the coronavirus, you say, well, um, the, body, the, the Bible says uh, it's concerned about the spirit. But Jesus says something interesting when he talks about loving God, to love him with all your soul, with all your might, with all your mind, with all your body, with everything that you have. So you have all the reason in the world Take care of the temple. If I might use a subject today, it's very simple. Temple maintenance. Temple maintenance. We want to be sure that during this time of COVID-19 that we're maintaining our bodies, that we're keeping them strong, that we're giving them uh, enough rest, that we're ingesting the right things in our bodies to help us cope with the stress that we're going through. Please remember that. We also want to be sure that we guard our mind, guard our thoughts. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 3. The wise man Solomon looks at this and he says, Keep your heart with all diligence. Out of it are the issues of life. We want to be sure that we're keeping our mind. Our thoughts. The Bible uses heart here. It's really talking about the intellectual part. The thinking part, the emotional part, 
of our bodies. The part that has feelings, emotions, thoughts, likes, dislikes, passion. Solomon says here, keep all diligence, whatever it takes. We need to feed it wholesome things that we might be able to go through uh, these difficult times. Uh, people are suffering from depression. And it's a, it's a challenging time. And, and, and this part, this period of the violence, where we've been confined for a long time, people are really getting anxious. They want to get out. They cause they're making unwise decisions and putting themselves in a position where uh, they're suffering the virus. Some of our hospitals are filling up because of the increased uh, patient load with coronavirus. So I want to share some thoughts with you today. I looked through my archives of some things that I've shared with, with uh, uh, at other times, and I in, 2011, I shared some thoughts, uh, some strategic steps that, that I thought were important for ministry. But looking at these today, I think these steps, uh, some of these overlap for all of us. And I want to talk about some of these things today that will help us deal and cope with some of the anxiety that we're feeling. Uh, in route, uh, I was out the other day, and I looked up on some of the parking lots and restaurants, and I, I noticed a lot of people going out to eat. Why is that? Something comforting about uh, going out to eat, uh, the camaraderie that you have with your friends or your family. But we need to be looking at some other ways to cope. This is an excellent time to strengthen our relationship with God. An excellent time. But how do we strengthen that relationship? The key of communicating with God is through prayer. During these times of COVID-19, we need to strengthen our prayer life. Prayer. Before, you were too busy. You had a lot of places to go, a lot of people to see, a lot of committee meetings to have, a lot of appointments to have, a lot of social events, a lot of things that you were doing that kept you busy from the time that you left work until the time you go to bed. I've got to go here. I've got to go there. I've got to meet with this group. I've got to go. Well, COVID-19 has changed a lot of that. We have more time strengthen our relationship, our intimate relationship, our personal relationship with God. How do you do that? You do that through prayer. Prayer is our link with God. It is our connection with God. It is our means of communicating with God. It is our means of talking to God. It is our means of sharing with God. It is our means of sharing our thoughts, our strengths, our weaknesses, our ups and downs, our, our fears, our, our anxiety, all those things that we feel, all those things that we have feelings about. Prayer is our link. I encourage you in looking at steps that you can take of temple maintenance is to spend time talking to God. Spend time listening to God. Prayer is not just sending up words to God. Prayer is listening to God, what God is saying to you, what's coming down from God to you becomes important. So one of the things 
in looking at temple maintenance is prayer. Praying to God. Listening to God. Seeking direction from God. Strength comes through prayer. So since we have more time when we're not out and about it gives us more time for prayer. And Isaiah I'm looking as I Isaiah chapter 26. Listen to this. Isaiah 26 verses 3 and 4. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. We need that for temple maintenance. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted thee, trusted in thee. Then he goes on to say, Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. What are we talking about here? We're talking about temple maintenance. This is an excellent time to spend time talking and receiving communication from God. Now, interesting, Isaiah gives us a very simple formula. I know we could, we could complicate this with a lot of theology. We could say a lot of things. We could build a lot into it. But it's straight, simple, plain everyday talk when he says trust in the Lord forever confidence in God and in verse 3 he says thou will keep him in perfect peace perfect peace whose mind stayed on him that's what you need. How do you get it? How do you get the perfect peace? One, you get it when your mind is focused on God. So as a part of the strategic plan here, for people, you want to be sure that during these times that we are communicating, focused on God, that we share with Him Listen to him in his response. This time, we have a time for personal quality time with God. What a time we have for that. So we should pray, communicate with God during this time. That's a part of the temple maintenance that will keep us focused. As Isaiah said, he'll keep you in perfect peace. And brothers and sisters, we need perfect peace. Not superficial peace, not peace for a moment, but peace that only comes from the everlasting Father, the everlasting God, the, the God of the ages that we serve. He will keep us in perfect peace. How do we get there? Here. Our mind stayed on him in the midst of a pandemic. So please remember that as part of temple maintenance. Spend more time, quality time with God in talking with him, in communicating with him. Number two, I want you to think about this. Your knowledge 
on the Bible. Time spent reading God's Word. What a time. You have time. One of the things you do, you can read God's Word. Read it. Take the time to read it. Put everything else aside. This is a part of temple maintenance. Feed yourself on scriptures like Isaiah 26, verses 3 and 4. Feed your thoughts with that. Feed your inner being with that. Feed your temple. Now, you remember, the temple is made up of the, the mind and the physical part. Feed it wholesome scriptures. Let me make a recommendation to you. Doing COVID-19 during this time is a great time to start memorizing powerful, life-giving, life-sustaining scriptures. You just don't read them. You find the ones that feed your being, that feed your mind, that feed your thoughts. Commit them to memory. That's part of temple maintenance. So what are we doing? We're praying more, talking to God more, listening for his answer. Let me, let me share something with you. It's not always us talking to God. When you pray, you want to hear what the Lord has to say to you. So, one, time to pray. Time to communicate with God. Two, spending time in God's Word. Not only reading it, Memorizing those powerful verses that bring life, strength in the midst of isolation. This becomes important. This becomes important. You can't get that watching the 6 o'clock news. You cannot get it looking at your favorite cable news channel. What you're going to see from that a lot of times is distress. Things that raise your anxiety. Things that make you uncomfortable. You need to look into God's Word. See those scriptures that give you peace, comfort, assurance that God's yet reigning in your life. Keep those in mind. One, prayer. Two, reading God's Word, studying God's Word, memorizing God's Word, internalizing God's Word. You are our everlasting Father. You are my Prince of Peace. You are my high tower. You are the one that has kept me, provided for me in the midst of this pandemic. God, I pray to you today. Give your name praise, thanksgiving, watching over me, watching over my family, taking care of my children, watching over my husband. Thank you for taking care of my friends, my family, my mother, my father. I lift your name up today for all of your goodness. Yes, God, I love you today. You love me. You provided for me. I yield, I kneel to you today in thanksgiving and reverence for all that you've done for me. You are my food, my shelter. You are my peace in the midst of the storm. Talk to God in language that, that conveys your feeling, your thoughts. God, I didn't think I could survive this, but you've been everything to me. I lift your name up today in prayer, thanksgiving. Communicate with him. Temple maintenance comes very important. On the physical side, 
We need to find ways to use our bodies more during these times. I don't recommend that anyone goes to a gym. YMCA, I don't recommend going to use the gym equipment for anybody. I know some are doing it. I pray God will have mercy on you. But this is not the time uh, to be in those kinds of places. But right in your living room, right in your family room, right in your basement, your bedroom, you can do some temple maintenance. Remember, we're talking about your body. You find ways to move your body. You say, well, I'm old. Well, quite frankly, I guess statistically, I am too. But you can find a way to move your body, to lift your arms, to utilize your, uh, your muscles. Find a way to get a little exercise. Walk around your house. Walk down the street. Find ways to continue to keep your body active, to keep your physical body active. The temple of the Holy Ghost is your natural body. But you need to, you need to find a way. You say, well, I'm sitting more. Well, get up and walk some more. Get up and do a little walk. You say, I don't want to go outside. It's cold. Walk in your house. Walk from your living room to your bedroom. Walk upstairs, downstairs. Find a way to move the temple of the Holy Ghost. Find a way. No more than stepping in place. Marching in place. Moving in place. Sitting in your chair. Sitting down. Standing up. Sitting down. Standing up. But find a way to move the temple of the Holy Ghost. It's important. It's important. People are gaining weight during COVID-19 because they're sitting more. Uh, people are, 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 are the cardiovascular system is, is becoming weaker because they're not moving more. I'm not talking about being an athlete. I'm not talking about playing basketball, all those things. Some of us will never do those things again. But it is important to keep your body moving during these times. Be careful of how much sitting you do. You say, I can't do much. I have arthritis. Do what you can. Move. Keep your body moving. Keep your arms moving. Move your legs a little bit. You say, I can't move them a lot. Move them a little bit. Sit down in the chair. Raise one leg up and put the other one down. Just something to keep you temple of the Holy Ghost during these times to keep it moving. Uh, God, God is doing his part. He's providing. We must do our part. Engage. Keep your mind active. Uh, I know there's one lady in our uh, local church congregation in her 90s now. She's always doing crossword puzzles. Keep your mind active. Temple of the Holy Ghost becomes important. It becomes very important. It is an excellent time to learn more about yourself, about your thoughts. Jeremiah in chapter 17 talks about the heart, and he says that. The heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. Who can know it? It is of God. Put it in the heart. Hey, you understand? What a time for you to spend time learning what's in your heart. This is such a wonderful time. Rarely do we do we have the time of introspection. That's that's what um, Proverbs four and twenty three was talking about. 
to keep your heart. This is a time when we, we, we have time to do introspection on ourselves. What is in your heart? What are those things that bother you? What are those feelings that maybe aren't as wholesome as they should be? Time of introspection where we can look, analyze our thoughts, what we think, why we think, things that bother you. What a time God has given us. And, 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 and Jeremiah looks at it so clearly. He says, the heart is deceitful above all things. He says, above all things is desperately wicked. So we want to be sure. We want to be sure. During these times, we have time to do some self-analyzing. Just don't sit there with a blank mind. Keep it working. Jesus talks about that. He says, out of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's in the heart? What's the, what are your passions? What are your strengths? What kinds of things are you thinking? This is the time to analyze that. To analyze that. To spend some time knowing yourself. Getting control of your emotions. Control of your thoughts. Control of your fears. Temple maintenance. In this time, COVID-19, we cannot Say, well, I'm just being patient. I'm just sitting here. No, no, no. This is not a time to vegetate. This is a time to be actively engaged. Joe, things happened to him uh, when he lost his prosperity, lost his property, and lost his children. He didn't go into a, 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 a deep depression, uh, but he was actively engaged, actively engaged in prayer, actively engaged in supplication, actively engaged in God. Yes, he felt the pain that some of you do. It's only natural. But in the midst of that, the patient peace comes when we work through those things, when we Spend more time with God. We spend more intimate time with Him. We spend more quality time with Him. When we talk to Him about our emotions and talk to Him about our fears and talk to Him about what we're feeling, Jesus did the same thing. And the pressure of the cross was looming over Him when the darkness of the day of his crucifixion was upon him. When the night was there, he found himself on his knees, engaged with God. Father, I'm feeling the pressure of my mission. God, I, I feel the weight of what's before me. I feel fear. I feel anxiety. I feel... Wait where I am. And if there's any way possible, God, to relieve me of this pressure that I feel. This was Jesus praying. It was his COVID-19. He couldn't move. The Roman soldiers were after him. The high priest and the Sanhedrin court wanted to kill him. It was real pressure. What did he do? Found himself on his knees. He found himself communicating with God. He found himself praying in a time of great stress and anxiety. That's why I say to you, as a part of your temple maintenance, you've got to pray. You've got to put it all out there. You've got to tell God what you feel. You've got to tell him what you're feeling. 
God, I'm concerned. Uh, they've cut my hours in the workplace. My, my income is not what it was. I'm, I'm concerned, God. I'm concerned about paying my rent. I'm concerned about food on the table. Uh, God, uh, I need divine intervention. That's what Jesus did. This is what we must do. Temple, maintenance, pray, communicate. Tell him your utmost, innermost thoughts. That's what you do in patience. That's what patience will give you. That's what the patience the Bible is talking about. It's not putting your hands in your head and saying, Oh Lord, I don't know what to do. It's saying, I serve a God. And an everlasting power. I serve a God who's eternal. I serve a God who has authority over all things. I'm praying to that God to open a door, make a way for me. Temple, amazing. So take care of this temple. It does howl. The Holy Ghost. Work on it spiritually. Mentally, physically, move your arms, lift them up, move your legs, move your back, stretch your body, use it during this time. Don't let it atrophy. So if you're able to walk, get out and go for a walk. It'll do your body good, it'll do your mind good. You don't have to go to a park. Walk around your yard, walk down the street, walk to the corner, move, keep moving, moving your body and your mind. It's temple maintenance for a tough time. I remember Dr. Robert Shula, some of you may remember Shula, he's deceased now. But Robert Shula had a saying. this time where you see death, John chapter 11, Jesus says this, looking death in the face of the death of Lazarus. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Though he be dead, Yet shall he live. He that lives and believes in me will never die. Take that message. Respect the virus, but understand that stronger than any virus is what you have through Jesus Christ. And what Christ was talking about was the resurrection. No virus can impede what God has in store for you. If life fails, the resurrection, the power of the resurrection is what our hope is. Paul said it so well to Philippians. He says, I want to know him. I want to know him, the power of his resurrection. I want to know him, the fellowship of his son. Whatever I have to deal with, I'll deal with it. Because I have that hope. At whatever cost, I want to be a part of the resurrection of the dead. So I'm saying to each of you today, be encouraged. God has it. He has it all under his authority. 
We want to take care of this temple that God has given us, spiritually and physically. I pray that you will be encouraged. I pray that you will continue to hold on. I pray that you will be cautious. I pray that you will continue to wear your mask, wash your hands, do the physical distancing, and all of those things as a part of temple maintenance to protect yourself during these times. And don't let the anxiety get you down, cause you to do something foolish. And some have contracted the virus. God has been merciful. Raise them up. I give God the glory and the praise for that today. Let us pray. Father and eternal God, we're thankful today for all of your goodness. And thank you today for life. And uh, thank you for this temple of the Holy Ghost. Help us today, God, to maintain this temple, not only spiritually, but physically, that we will nurture it with wholesome thoughts, that we will nurture it with your word, that we will strengthen it through our prayers and relationships, and that we will do everything that we can uh, to keep it strong and healthy. The Holy Ghost. Help us today, God. You've been so merciful, so kind. We depend on you today for all things. These prayers I pray in Jesus' name. Now the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord let his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. God bless you. Ow.